Hello, N4H&H &H here with the Yaesu FT710. I want to show you a little something uh, about CW mode and the new digital noise reduction. And I say new, it's a different chip in this radio. And uh, while I have criticized it a bit as far as sideband, uh, just meaning that, you know, a, a much above three is unusable. It gets the, the, the awful uh, digital artifacts that sound like you're listening underwater. Um, but I thought I would try it on uh, CW because I actually use digital noise reduction. I max it out with the FTDX10 and it helps mask the filter ripple that, you know, the ringing effect that you get from tight filtering. And so uh, let's try that out. Now, right now, I'm actually doing very little filtering. So you hear that signal there. I'm gonna tap the DSP button. I've got the filter width. Okay, so here's default. So tap it till it blinks and then you can change it. When it's gray, it's default. Okay, going down to 50 hertz. Tell you what, I'll go to 100. 50 will choke it a little bit, but I will use 50 when the station's very, very in the weeds like a ghost station. Okay, now I'm also going to tap digital noise reduction, see DNR, long press, it's set at 15. Makes a little difference, but watch this in combination with my notch trick. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting the notch at about at 530, which is 70 hertz below the side tone frequency I'm using, which is 600. What's cool about th this in the FTDX10 is these filter, the digital filters are so tight. You can, I mean, yes, that will knock out your side tone, but I'm at, I'm at 570. And I'm still hearing enough of the ripple that I know I'd be able to hear a station. But... Let's find a happy medium with that. Let's go to maybe 530. All right, now digital noise reduction. Look at the S meter. I mean, we've all these things combined And we just about make them sound like code practice and the signal's barely wiggling the meter. Just using zero in there to try to center up on. See, it's not uncommon for CW stations to be 10, 20, 30 hertz apart. And when you're running a tight filter like I am right now, pick which one you wanna hear. Well, wow. that's the summit's on the air station in Georgia, so he is um, ground wave to me. That's Blood Mountain. It's a 10 point summit for summits on the air, which is the maximum. Um, it's pretty high up there, it's over 4,000 feet. So I'll, I'll see if I can work that station right quick. That's N4, Echo India, India. And let's see, that's Al. He, Al is on um, 14056, I'll call it. Just setting up my log up here on the other display. Give it a whirl here in a second.
Still getting a bit of filter ripple. I'm going to increase this. Whoops. It's a little tricky there. I, I still prefer the FTDX10 way where all of this is a knob. Definitely soda. Uh, just trying different antennas, getting them best on the off-center fed dipole. Look at the meter. Showing a full 100 watts output. Okay, so um, in another video, I showed you how you can go into the menu and through the function knob there, and this radio, the FT710, has the ability to set the power output meter for peak reading rather than average. The FTDX10 is average only. Okay, a, a nice little enhancement for the 710. Um, although, it doesn't bother me because they use external um metering anyway but uh you know the ft710 is a nice size for doing some portable operation so it, w it is nice to be able to have metering because you probably wouldn't be running an amp portable have the metering in there have the antenna tutor in there granted like all modern rigs uh, just about anything you can buy now the antenna tuner is really a touch-up tuner your antenna needs to be within three to one uh, swr already and then this tuner can you know touch up the band edges or you know uh, bring it on down below one and a half uh, to one? But you know that does give you then everything self-contained in one unit. Um, so you know a couple of little things that need to be cleared up. I think as far as the DSP is concerned, hopefully a firmware update will take care of that. And uh, that little clicking sound I'm hearing in the CW, that's a little bit. Uh, I guess I guess I would get used to it, um, but it's just interesting that that's going on. And uh, others have reported that as well. But there you go. Uh, you know, I chased a, chased a soda activator, showed you my gain structure here on CW um, as far as, you know, knocking down uh, the noise. I still haven't even, in fact, I think I'll do it in this video. I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit of an icing on the cake thing that I would do for, uh, oh, and I'm on the wrong menu here. Let's see. We want CW setting. Now you'll see that you've got each mode, and this is a, a kind of unique here. The FTDX10 introduced this for Yesu. You actually have receive um, for mode CW, all the modes. You have treble, mids, bass. Um, I don't really find it necessarily to do anything on this, but you do have that. I do use that with CW. Now I'm going to go down and this is what I like to adjust. Low cut. So I've got my tone set at 600. So I'm going to start the low cut at 500 and I'm going to sharply cut at 18 dB, which is the default. Now I've got, since I'm set on 700, I'm going to put my high cut at 700 or 600 is where my tone is. So I'm going to start my high cut at 700 and also slope it at 18 dB. Now, why am I doing that? 
this is the audio tapering. So since I really only want to hear 600 hertz, I'm going to allow myself a little bit of leeway, 100 hertz above, 100 hertz below, and then I'm, I'm then I'm going to have the audio system in the radio sharply slope off. So at 18 dB per dB per octave, uh, you know, if you're curious about what the other option is, uh, here we go. It's six. But six means a gentle slope. 18 is going to give you a steep slope. And what I'm saying is I want to carve out 600 hertz only. I'll leave a little bit plus or minus because some people are going to be a little off frequency. But then I want to slope it off very steep slope at 18 dB per octave. So now not only do I have the filtering happening in the DSP, I've also got the audio system helping zero in on just a 600 hertz pitch. So that's the importance of that. And that would also help cut down on any of that ringing that you're hearing. I mean, listen, that's quiet. So let me undo everything. Turn off notch. That brings back some of it. Width, back to default. And now you're hearing that little underwater effect. That's coming from DNR. Turn it off. So that's what you would be dealing with without all of this filtering. See, they, there he is. Notice I gave him a 539 a while ago. I don't know if you, if you copied CW. He is really hitting a 3, and the S meter is calibrated with that amp 1. But I was guessing at it with my ears. I've been doing it a while. Because when you tighten up your filters, you affect the S meter reading. It's going to drop it down. All right, but let's, uh, let's get back in here. Um, so we'll change the width. Remember, there are no physical roofing filters in this radio. So it's completely relying on the DSP to do the filtering. Now here comes the notch trick. See the S meters drop now. And of course, icing on the cake, DNR. This DNR is not as effective as the one in the FT uh, DX10. And this DNR also has that uh, digital artifact that makes, uh, makes it sound like uh, you're listening underwater. And I should qualify that any above anything above algorithm three does that. Up to algorithm three, you're okay. But as I've shown in other videos, algorithm three in the FT710 is not as effective as algorithm three in the FT DX10. FT710 uses a different DSP chip from NXP semiconductors. The FT DX10 has a DSP chip from Texas Instruments. So they're just completely different chips. Um, I've pointed out in another video that even the AMC acts differently in the FT710. Um, the com compressor meter is, well, to be honest with you, it's, it's just about useless uh, in the FT710. They've got to do something to fix the, that the programming's not right for the compressor meter. Referring to that meter there, COMP. Um, ALC seems to work okay, but the compressor meter not so. Um, but you know, this is not a compressor meter video. This is some CW stuff, but I just wanted to, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the ca filtering capabilities. The DNR is helping, um, to put a little bit of icing on the cake there at the end. All right. And you heard the difference. I mean, listen to him now. It's almost like listening to a code practice oscillator. Now I've got it tightened down pretty well here with the width. Let me go back up to a hundred. Okay, and um, I'll leave you with back to defaults. And why listen to all that if you don't have to? Now, I, I, I would argue that the DNR was just a little bit of help. Mostly the help was coming from notch and width. 
Okay, hope you found the video helpful and informative. I want to thank the Patreon support team who make it possible for me to bring you these videos with the honest to goodness, uh, raw truth. I don't try to uh, hold back and protect any manufacturer. I'm not, I don't have an allegiance to anyone. Uh, so as much as I like the FTDX10, is it a perfect radio? No, there are none. Uh, it gets very, very close. But I'm also going to tell you when I find things wrong. And the FT710 so far, it's got some advantages. The digital notch filter does not create distortion that I've been able to hear. Uh, that distortion is noticeable in the FTDX10. But in other areas, uh, the DSP chip in the FT710 is just not holding up uh, to my scrutiny anyway. Uh, maybe I'm being nitpicky, but um, I've never heard that underwater sound with an FTDX10 or for that matter, my FTDX 5000 MP. So as long as you keep the digital noise reduction at three or less, you'll be okay. Uh, but hopefully, and I am hopeful that Yesu will come out with a firmware update that will correct that some. Because as I pointed out in an earlier video, the digital noise reduction, um, three is not enough and four is way too aggressive. And then you got four all the way to 15. It can get very, very gnarly. So, uh, you know, I'm able to tell you these things because I have a Patreon support team that offset the cost of running the channel and I don't have to accept advertising. So if you like this type of content and you want to see me continue to bring you this type of content, uh, my goal is to save you money. I don't want you to spend money on unnecessarily. People spend money on five and six hundred dollar microphones. Unnecessary. These radios have all the EQ capabilities you need built in. Uh, so I don't want you to spend money like that when you can get a $150 microphone and do a great job, get stellar audio reports without breaking the bank. So that's my goal here. I want you to make a wise purchase choice. And uh, yes, I will go ahead and say that as far as comparing FT710 to FTDX10, grab an FTDX10 before the prices increase. Uh, there, right now, there's not a lot of difference in price, and I do believe that the, it's worth it to pay the extra and get an FTDX10. So I'm just going to put that out there, guys. I'm going to be real with you. So if you'd like to join that uh, Patreon team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And there are perks. Uh, we have internal discussions, polling, a lot, of, a lot of technical help back and forth. The executives and VIPs have access to my PDF downloads that cover various different rigs, my menu customizations for those rigs, and there's even a setup document to help get an FTDX10 on the air uh, doing FT8. I cover the radio side and the WSJTX software side. And uh, I expect to do the same, uh, create the same type of documents for the 710. Uh, although if you already have a 710, I suspect you can use the same setup document um, that I wrote for FT8 for the FTDX10 to get the FT710 on the air doing FT8. Okay, hey, uh, thanks for watching. I wish you would uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And please, if you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Usually two, sometimes more a week, depending on the news. And uh, finally, please uh, smash that thumbs up button. Give me a like and share the video with your friends, uh, you know, via email, text message, social media, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks for watching in 73 from N4HNH.